Gates open in Arapahoe Park. In a historic year for horse racing with a reigning Triple Crown winner for the first time in 37 years, we look back at six decades of history of horse racing in Colorado. From the Gates opening its Centennial Racetrack in 1950, to Phil Dees representing Colorado in the Kentucky Derby in 1951, to the Colorado Red Stars of the 21st century competing at Arapahoe Park, the Rocky Mountain State at the forefront of horse racing in the United States. We're showing you the behind the scenes of horse racing and some of sports most majestic athletes. So get a leg up, come on to the track and be ready for the start because the horses are at the post. Welcome to a behind the scenes look of horse racing. I'm Jonathan Horowitz, the announcer at Arapahoe Park. August is the final month of the 2015 live horse racing season in Colorado. It gives us the chance to look at how we got here and some opportunities horse racing could capitalize on in the future. On this episode of Gates Open will be a look at horse racing in Colorado from the state's first major racetrack at Centennial in Littleton, opened in 1950, to Arapahoe Park racing every year since 1992. Horse racing in Colorado. From Centennial Racetrack to Arapahoe Park. And they're off! Gates open. The 2015 Colorado Derby is underway with the Philly Kalinda Dawn breaking on top. In many cultures, rain on a wedding day is a good omen for good times ahead. The marriage between horse racing and Colorado began on a rainy July 4th in 1950 with the first day of racing in the state at Centennial Racetrack located along the Platte River in Littleton. More than 13,000 people packed the grandstand on the inaugural day of horse racing, wagering more than $500,000, and ushering in a lively history of horse racing in the Rocky Mountain State. A long time ago, uh, there was a track called Centennial that was here. Before that, there was actually fair circuits in the state of Colorado. Uh, the Western spirit is alive and well in Colorado. Uh, to where almost everybody owns a horse. We are second in the United States in horse population of the horses that are here. So, you know, the great western spirit is alive here and it kind of just automatically leads to racing. Many of the county fairs that happened, the little city fairs, would have race meets of, of, you know, short duration, two weeks, and people would travel from meet to meet. Um, after that came in a racetrack called Centennial. Horses from neighboring states flocked to Colorado. And they're off! Crismo broke on top on the outside with extreme early speed. A two-year-old chestnut colt named Phil D, who ran during Centennial's opening season in 1950, competed in the next year's Kentucky Derby. Here is Phil D in the lead of the Derby that would eventually be won by Count Turf, with Phil D and jockey Raymond York finishing fourth. Count Turf makes it going away! Count Turf comes home the winner by four lengths to cop first place money of $98,000. Another derby record. Colorado made it to Kentucky. And 30 years later, Kentucky would come to Colorado. In 1981, Centennial became the first track to offer simulcast wagering on the Kentucky Derby won that year by Pleasant Colony and jockey Jorge Velasquez. Other great horses that raced at Centennial included Spicy. The mare, who won 33 total races in a career from 1957 to 1963, once captured three stakes races in just nine days. She set four track records. It was the social event. It was the thing to do in the city of Denver. And Centennial was a grand old lady that lasted for many years. And you can see by the stands that they were always full. So it was kind of the place to go in Denver to see the uh, people that were in town, sports groups that were in town, the who's who of Denver. And Centennial was kind of not only a place where they raced, it was also a social event with great success. Centennial was a great little track to me. Horsemen stuck together. They had a great track to run out around the country, one of the tops. And I also say that about a Rappel Park race track. I'm not a track man, but I say it's one of the best around the country too.
Gates Open at Arapaho Park is presented by the His Highness Sheikh Mansur bin Zayed Al Nayan Global Arabian Horse Flat Racing Festival. On the edge of glory in the Watts, the Stud Farm Cup and Grizel LZP with Carlo Lopez looking over the shoulder for the competition that hasn't emerged yet. With races in 11 countries, the Wafa Stunt Farm Cup will be held at Arapaho Park on May 24th, July 5th, and August 9th. Behind the growth of horse racing in Colorado, the Colorado Horse Racing Association, the Colorado Thoroughbred Breeders Association, the Rocky Mountain Quarter Horse Association, Colorado owners and breeders of racing Arabians, Cantor, Colorado, finding new homes for retired racehorses. Centennial passed the baton of horse racing in Colorado to Arapaho Park for one experimental season in 1984. Arapaho Park has been racing every year since 1992. Horse racing in Colorado is in the midst of a renaissance in terms of the quality of horses and races in the Rocky Mountain State, more coverage of Arapaho Park's races, innovative programs to promote the welfare of horses, and improvements to the fan experience at the track. There are more than 130 racetracks in North America, but Arapaho Park is one of only eight that races thoroughbreds, quarter horses, and Arabians. Each breed has stars that are some of the best Colorado has seen. Their successes, along with American Pharaohs becoming horse racing's first Triple Crown winner in 37 years, are bringing unprecedented attention to Arapaho Park's races. And all of a sudden, there's American Pharaoh. And all of a sudden, real managers get a new breath of life. You get a new star that you need to, to do something, that you need to use it to promote. And people think that American Pharaoh can't help Arapaho Park are dead wrong. If you could have been here Belmont Day, and seeing the people rooting for this horse, cheering for this horse, to do well, you're happy. And in Colorado, is stepping up in the breeding world, get happy mister. Ran all over the country now winning stake races. Started here, won his first five, six races right here at Arapaho Park in Colorado bred races. You couldn't give a Colorado bred away. Now I'm getting calls. For thoroughbreds, get happy mister is unbeaten in all nine of his races at Arapaho Park ranging in distances from 5 eighths of a mile to 1 and 1 eighth miles. Owned by Annette Bishop, trained by Butch Gleason, and ridden by jockey Mike Ziegler, Happy put an exclamation point on the best season a thoroughbred has had at Arapahoe Park in the $100,000 Arapahoe Park Classic in 2014, the richest race Arapahoe Park holds for thoroughbreds. And it's Get Happy Mister, who flies the flag for Colorado, takes the lead, comes past the quarter pole, two lengths in front, lead him in Ken, leads the chase in second place, and then Magical Twist in third, on the edge of glory in the Arapahoe Park Classic, and Ziggy shakes the reins at Get Happy Mister, Get Happy Mister responds, lead him in Ken, doesn't have an answer, and then comes Magical Twist, but Colorado can rejoice in its hometown hero. Get happy, mister. Never been beaten at Arapaho Park and no win bigger than this Arapaho Park Classic. Then he went to the big stage in California and won the $100,000 grade three San Simeon stakes against the best turf sprinters in the state. Side here's Get Happy Mister. Get Happy Mister down the Santa Holy Loot. Suddenly the whole picture changes. Get Happy Mister at the rail. Holy Loot, the gray on the outside. Gonna hit it together. Get Happy Mister in front. Get Happy Mister has won it. For quarter horses, Stoli Angel, 
won the 2014 Muriola Arapaho Distaff Challenge and earned the right to represent Colorado on Quarter Horse Racing's championship evening at Prairie Meadows in Iowa. She flew the flag for Colorado and defeated horses who had come out of regional races in California, Texas, and even Canada in the $100,000 Grade 1 Championship for female horses, fillies, and mares at 400 yards. With a, a late a rally, and as they come down to line, Stoli Angel and Cadillac Stoli Angel wins it. For Arabians, Miss Dixie became the first horse in the history of Arapahoe Park to win two stakes races in two days. The 2014 Cobra Distaff sponsored by Soaring Eagle Ranch, and the next day, the Cobra Classic sponsored by Crow Valley Ranch. Owned by the Quarter Moon Ranch of Lori Powell and husband trainer Scott Powell, Miss Dixie is a three-time Darley Award winner as a United States Arabian champion. Congratulations once again, our 2014 Darley champion older mayor, Miss Dixie. Yem Fred Texas won the Darley Award for Horse of the Year in America in 2011 while racing in Arapahoe Park during his championship campaign. Then he represented Arapahoe Park, Colorado, and the USA in one of the richest Arabian races in the world at Maidan in the United Arab Emirates. But Fred Texas in front, he's holding Seraphim de Payon, and the Arabian Horse of the Year from the USA in 2011 wins the Dubai Kahala Classic 2012. These successes are highlighted in consistent coverage of Arapahoe Parks races in the Denver Post. On the sports show with Woody Page and Les Shapiro. Jonathan Horowitz, horse racing insider from the Celtic Tavern, and the track and the track. He came in. He came in with free tickets for everybody to Rappaho and some winning tickets. And look, we're going. He, Jonathan loves to be here because he wants to outdress me. Look, we change the, look, By the way, care. Jonathan's here so often we change the name of the show. <laughs> the sports show with Woody Page and Les Shapiro, and in big, in bold big, letters, big letters too. Yeah, featuring American yes, featuring Jonathan Harris. <laughs> Gates open at Arapahoe Park, and on Altitude Sports and Entertainment, where Gates open at Arapahoe Park showcases unique views about the behind the scenes of horse racing such as what it's like to ride in a race with a GoPro camera worn by jockey Francisco Giles aboard Tearing Up Thunder. Live horse racing at Arapaho Park takes place from May 22nd to August 16th on Fridays, Saturdays and Sundays starting at 1 p.m. Gates open the Miles Massey handicap is underway. Keep up with the latest online at myhighracing.com. On Facebook at facebook.com slash Arapahoe Racing. And on Twitter at JJ Horowitz. Miss Dixie and Lil Rich Girl in a photo finish that goes to Miss Dixie holding on by the narrowest of margins. Arapahoe Park has also received national attention for some of its innovative ideas that are revolutionizing horse racing in the United States. In 2014, Arapahoe Park became the first racetrack in the United States to offer a program that rewards horsemen for racing their horses to avoid a race day medication. Arapahoe's race day medication free incentive program provides trainers with a $1,000 bonus for every victory by their horse that does not use medication on race day. Oaklawn Park in Arkansas, where American Pharaoh prepped for his Triple Crown campaign, subsequently adopted a bonus program similar to Arapahoe Parks. My philosophy really, really is quite simple. You put the horse first, ahead of everything else. And the horseman isn't just the people entering the horseman. The horsemen are the grooms and the hot walkers and the pulling people and the exercise people, all the unseen heroes that are involved in making the race meet happen. I like to say here when people talk to me, I tell them that every horse here, of which we have 1,500, every horse has seven people that are involved with getting that horse just to the position where he can race. So racetracks are a big economic boom to every area that we're in. It isn't just about wagering. There are all the other you know, groups of things that go along, from veterinarians to feed to blacksmiths, it's a, it's a complicated, very layered business. With the goal of fostering the welfare of its equine athletes, 
Arapahoe Park has partnered with organizations that find new homes for retired racehorses. Arapahoe Park sponsored the Colorado's Most Wanted Thoroughbred Contest presented by Retired Racehorse Project in March that showcased the new careers of former racehorses as show and sport horses. Arapahoe's Sweet Peaceful Dream is a contestant at the National Thoroughbred Makeover at the Kentucky Horse Park in October. <laughs> Arapahoe Park also sponsors horse shows. During the season, the track facilitates Cantor Colorado's work, coordinating with trainers whose horses are reaching the end of racing and transitioning into new careers. It's the full life cycle. We care about the breeding process, and then the racing process for competition, and then the aftercare process. So our services are really deemed to help transition and promote the marketability of thoroughbreds after racing. And we do that a number of ways. And we, and we do that through rehabilitation, and we do that through training. And if we can put them in uh, the spotlight to go at horse shows and demonstrate in second careers their ability and their athleticism for competition, we help that promote horses uh, transition into second careers after racing. To improve the on-track experience for fans, track created the ninth furlong cabana area in 2015 that can accommodate 200 people adjacent to the finish line. There is a tiki bar at track level as part of new ways for spectators to watch the races. Fans can request tours of the stable area and announcers booth as part of the track's effort to present the behind the scenes of horse racing. I think the thing that I like the most is we created a personality for Arapahoe to just exist as we have for, for 20 plus years. Uh, when a lot of other tracks have closed down and can't compete, we're still in there banging and we're doing good. Right now as I stand before you, this is the most successful meet we've ever had. We could be a model for a lot of places. We're still here and I see us being here going in the future. We're always thinking of different things that we can do here. I like when I go to a, a conference someplace, now I used to be the youngest guy in the room. Now all of a sudden I'm the oldest guy in the room and people are talking to me, how do you do that? It gives me great pleasure that they look at a little place like Arapahoe that's only running 39 days, seeing that we can be progressive and we can only be progressive with the help of the horsemen and the understanding of the horsemen and the, and the backup from the horsemen. Because without them, I got nothing. It's really simple. I provide the stage, the horsemen provide the actors and we put on a show. Arapahoe Park, a 39-day live horse racing season in Colorado that is having year-round effects on horse racing in the United States. The 2015 season at Arapahoe Park has been one of the most successful in the history of the track in terms of crowd sizes, wagering handles, and quality of races and horses. Horse racing is currently riding a wave of momentum from American Pharaohs becoming the first Triple Crown champion in 37 years. A large crowd was at Arapahoe Park to cheer American Pharaoh in the Belmont in June. Two weekends later was Father's Day, which always features one of the biggest crowds of the season at Arapahoe Park. The crowds have continued to come in large numbers. But having a Triple Crown winner does not grow horse racing on its own. Horse racing sustained growth is beginning from how the sport has built off American Pharaoh's Triple Crown. American Pharaoh became just the third horse this century to appear on the cover of Sports Illustrated and was also featured in a photo shoot for Vogue magazine. Jockey Victor Espinoza and trainer Bob Baffert classily donated their earnings from the Belmont Stakes win to charity. Owner Ahmed Zayed has decided to continue racing American Pharaoh after the Triple Crown, recognizing the potential goodwill the horse's continued career will have for the sport. New fans are visiting racetracks around the country for the first time, and now it is up to tracks like Arapahoe Park to cater to a new demographic in the packed sports and entertainment marketplace of the 21st century. Horse racing around the country is in need of new audiences and new ways to improve the on-track experience to cater to new fans. 
This year, Arapaho Park built the nine for long cabana area and a tiki bar as unique ways to experience the horse racing action. Horse racing has an inherent interactivity compared to other sports. Fans aren't tied to a specific seat. They can watch races from up close at the rail or see horses getting saddled and the accompanying jockey trainer instructions in the paddock. Very few sports offer the equivalent of courtside seats or locker room visibility like horse racing does. This interactivity can be expanded by offering behind the scenes tours of the stable area and racing operations that give closer views of the majestic equine athletes. Many fans visit my announcer's booth and I'm always happy to show off what I think is the best view at the track. Arapahoe Park brings in families, couples, and parties, from the young to the old, all seeing the racing action as a way to spend time together and enjoy the day. Arapahoe Park has looked beyond racing to audiences interested in other aspects of the horse world, such as eventing and jumping, through hosting the Colorado's Most Wanted Thoroughbred Contest at the Rocky Mountain Horse Expo with Cantor Colorado and Retired Racehorse Project. Another audience from which horse racing can benefit is millennials in today's digital age. To this end, Arapaho Park has a strong digital presence through social media and videos on the internet about horse racing. More can be done in horse racing to further technological advancement with mobile apps for wagering or enhancing a day at the races. Arapaho Park receives as much consistent television and print coverage of its horse races as any track in the United States. This coverage also capitalizes on the human connection of horse racing through profiles of jockeys like Dennis Collins and Travis Wales and spotlighting fascinating people at the track like farrier Scott Schuldberg or starter Sean Demoni and his gate crew. The Triple Crown is a national series and horse racing could use more national races and marquee events instead of remaining regional. Golf, NASCAR and tennis events bring together the best players from around the country and the world on a consistent basis. Arapahoe Park's closing weekend of stakes races attract horses to ship to Colorado from other states, although Arapahoe Park and other tracks could use more marquee events or series that make up the equivalent of a horse racing major league. Horse racing will also benefit from increased transparency. Arapahoe Park was the first track in the United States in 2014 to offer the Race Day Medication Free Incentive Program, which offers bonuses to trainers who win races with horses void of a race day medication. Although horse racing will benefit from diversifying beyond being a legal wagering enterprise, horse racing can also adjust its wagering offerings to cater to new audiences in much the same way that casinos in Las Vegas have evolved their gaming menus. There's a large audience interested in passive gambling, such as how the majority of gaming in Las Vegas is slot machines. There are numerous possibilities for the ability to wager on apps and make the racing program more understandable to a casual fan. Similar to football, horse racing could offer prop bets, such as evens and odds like roulette, over-unders on number of jockey wins, or whether a gray horse will win a race. With a Triple Crown champion, horse racing looks very different than at any time in the 21st century. The sport will need to continue to evolve to continue the momentum of the Triple Crown. With two weekends left in the 2015 season at Arapahoe Park, I invite you and your family to come to the races to see the exciting new developments in horse racing in Colorado, to cheer for your own American Pharaoh, and to watch a race from the best seat in the house in my announcer's booth. Then you'll experience, as the Marx Brothers did in their classic 1937 movie, what it means to have a day at the races. That's Gates Open at Arapahoe Park, and until your next time out at the races, I'm Jonathan Horowitz. Keep picking winners. Mm -hmm.